Not only was he writing the forward to James Martin's new book, but he has also just hired three new assistant bishops for Cardinal Fernandez at the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, all of which with their mouths have affirmed the church's teaching on marriage, but with their actions have been the most pro fiducia supplicants, priests, and bishops in the entire church. They are now working directly for Cardinal Fernandez. Has uh, Pope Francis been uh, waffling just a wee bit? It seems though, because last week you might remember we had the whole conversation about why he used that uh, derogatory term, has to backtrack on that apology. There's worldwide pushback from homosexual priests and clergy all over the world, just not happy with Pope Francis over it. And this week, we learned that he actually encourages a homosexual man to continue with their vocation. And then, of course, we also learned that he's endorsed Jimmy Martin's book. It's weird. It's kind of bizarre. I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it seems like a bit of a waffle there. We're going to have Dr. Anthony Stein on the program to talk about what is going on here? It seems to be a little bit of talking out of both sides of their mouth. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. Dr. Anthony Stein joins us now. Good morning to you, Dr. Stein. Thank you for your time today. What's going on here? Is Pope Francis talking out of both sides of his mouth? Uh, what, what are we to believe in all of this? It sounds like he is if you take what he says out of its historic context. Let us remember that that kind of language, this is just a cruder version of what he has said before about traditional priests and priests who want to have a more traditional priesthood. Remember, he has said two groups of priests before that who says we don't have women in the priesthood? Look at all the lace that you see. And then talking about how priests need to give up grandma's lace and all this stuff. I am convinced that he was directing the comments that you said there towards traditionally minded priests, whether they are traditional Latin mass priests or priests who offer the ordinary form in a traditional way, that that is what he is talking about, especially when you couple that language with what he said on 60 Minutes about conservatives, where on that you'll recall in that interview, he talked about conservatism in the church, not just in the church, but in the broader world as being an ideology that essentially replaces love and all this kind of thing. He is, he is remarkably consistent on these things when you understand his context of what he says. The one thing you didn't mention there, not only was he writing the forward to James Martin's new book, but he has also just hired three new assistant bishops for Cardinal Fernandez at the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, all of which with their mouths have affirmed the church's teaching on marriage, but with their actions have been the most pro fiducia supplicants, priests and bishops in the entire church. They are now working directly for Cardinal Fernandez. Yeah, you can take what he says on one hand and what he does on the other hand and find out what he's really doing. It causes such um, confusion, and I think a growing confusion among the lay faithful too, who are sort of waking up to all of this now that we've had, you know, more than a decade of this, and they just don't know what to make of it. Many people are actually abandoning Holy Mother Church because they can't take it anymore. Like, it's it's just so bizarre. Um, on one hand, you will tell us that you affirm church teaching, but on the other hand, you continue to have these dysfunctional broken men uh, surrounding you, and in higher and higher authoritative positions. Let me just share my desktop with you so and uh, and refer to what he was just talking about. Edward Penton reported on this just the other day. He says, Pope Francis today appointed the following three prelates as members of the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith. All have defended the church's moral teaching and marriage between a man and a woman. Cardinal Jose uh, Mendoza, prefect of the Dicastery for the Culture and Education, served for some years as rector of the Capella Dorato, a private chapel in Lisbon known for ministering to homosexuals whom he said he doesn't judge. The cardinal has also been a support of Maria Teresa, uh, a former religious sister famous for advocating queer theology and wrote a preface to one of her books. Now, the issue isn't administering or, or helping or discipling or working with people who s struggle with same-sex attraction or gender dysphoria. That's totally fine. That's good. We ought to be, you know, doing that. That's not the issue. The issue is pretending as though their behaviors are normal or acceptable or okay. Therein lies the problem. 
Cardinal Marcelo uh, Samariaro, I'm sure I'm getting that wrong, Samararo, prefect of the dicastery for the causes of saints, has reportedly turned his diocese into the Italian capital of the Catholic gay movement, annually hosting the Forum of Italian LGBT Christians, a group seeking to make homosexuality fully acceptable inside the church. He also wrote the foreword to a book by an Italian priest entitled Possible Love, Homosexual Persons and Christian Morality, and supported by legal recognition of homosexual civil unions. See what I'm saying? This is the problem. It's not about meeting people where they're at. It's not about, you know, uh, having a, a sort of a sympathetic heart to the struggles of people and their issues. That's not the issue. The issue is pretending as though those, those sins, those difficulties, those temptations are normal, acceptable, and should be just, you know, just like everybody else. You're just like everybody else. It's just totally fine. Therein lies the problem. Therein lies the challenge. And then, of course, there's Archbishop Bruno Forte. Uh, I, uh, I, he, is, uh, in, he, he was responsible for this, the sections on homosexuality in the controversial interim document of the first synodal family in uh, the first synod on the family in 2014. Why do you think Pope Francis does this, this double talk, this uh, crypto speak that he likes to use, digging on people in sort of casual low bar language that seems to be beneath the office of the pontificate? How, how do you explain that? I think the language can go back to his early days as a bouncer. It's, it's hard to take a person's past out of them. And I don't mean to denigrate anybody who's a bouncer for a living, although it's kind of a weird <laughs> occupation if you're a Catholic. <laughs> but, um, but I think that's part of it. But I, th I think it really does go back to his saying he was made pope to implement Vatican II. Remember the other part of Vatican II that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And that was when it was announced, the council was announced. What did Pope John XXIII say? That we were opening the windows of the church to the world to let some fresh air in. And... Since then, we have been in a state of permanent aggiornamento, a, fa a permanent phase of change in the church. The church constantly trying to adapt itself to the times, to the world. And what is the world most obsessed with right now? That sin and all the permutations of that sin that cries out to heaven for justice. That sin for which God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and three other cities in the Old Testament. For whatever reason, they forget the justice of God and how these sins can be forgiven for people. Plenty of Catholics have turned their back on the on that sinful life and carried their cross of those kinds of inclinations, but they live a life according to the teachings of the church and are to be commended. They're some of the most courageous people you will ever meet are those who do that. But for whatever reason, hierarchy wants to adopt the worldview of the secular world on this. And I think it goes back to what Roberto de Mate wrote on his Patreon and in Verate uh, Chaley and a few other places in an article published yesterday or the day before on this, that there has been an ongoing quiet infiltration of the hierarchy of the church by men with James Martin's inclinations. That they have quietly been there and under Francis, they have not been hidden anymore, that they're out in the open running things. And it's men, these men who will be key to understanding how the next conclave goes, by the way. They'll be the ones assisting the bishops. They will be the one assisting the Camerlengo. You know who the Camerlengo is right now, Joe? Mm, yeah, Farrell, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he Ted McCarrick's roommate? Not Ted, yeah. Well, ask him about Masiel as well. Ask him about uh, Masiel the next time you get a chance to talk to him. You know, he says he didn't know anything about Masiel. Masiel, uh, you know, had uh, children out of wedlock. He molested his own children as well as many others. He led a, a double life. And then, of course, there was Ted McCarrick, whom he lived with. And, of course, he didn't know anything about that. Although, you know, Bishop Lopes reminds us in his homily back in 2018 that we all knew, everyone knew, everyone knew about Cardinal McCarrick, except for, I guess, Cardinal Farrell. Uh, Stein, uh, Dr. Stein, are you back on the show? Yeah, who was yeah. his roommate? Yeah, and my, which is why I think the most iconic video interview I've ever seen for that period, 2018, 2019, was Kevin Farrell sitting there going, I was shocked to learn right. about this. Yeah. Shocked. I'm like, shocked. bro, you're really? his roommate. Wow. Right. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> roommates, like, tend, men, just, adult men with roommates tend to know about their personal, the personal lives of their roommates more than they'd like yeah. to know. Probably. Having been an adult man in a secular kind of roommate situation many years ago, you tend to learn the habits of your of, of your roommate. So please yeah. don't tell us you didn't know. 
It's possible for sure, but likely not, right? That, that's the that's the key. And as far as Masiel goes, you might remember there was a 2014 Frontline PBS special in Secrets of the Vatican or whatever, where they interviewed Masiel's son. I mean, it was so disgusting and so disturbing uh, a story uh, that I think most Catholics probably never watched it. But the, the realities of of these 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 predators they have risen to high places, and the people who have also risen. You know, there's a connection there that you can't just ignore. And Farrell gets to help to uh, to form and, and fashion the next conclave that brings about the next pontificate. So let me ask you, as we run out of time in this segment here, what are your hopes for the next uh, uh, the next conclave, the next pontificate? Do you think we're going to get more of the same? Do you think we might bring be brought back more to the middle? It wouldn't surprise me if you got a pope who was old and a, and what I call a moderate. I don't think we've had a truly conservative or traditional pope since before the council that you would get like i consider benedict and john paul ii to be moderates in the grand scheme of things in the church it wouldn't surprise me if you got somebody like that who was older would only be there for three or four years a sort of a john the 23rd but moderate meant to be a placeholder Hmm. to try to calm things down in the church that would not surprise me wouldn't also surprise me is if the saint gallon mafia got their way they have quietly been meeting in saint gallon switzerland and they have said that what they want is another Francis, but one who they can control. Because the one thing I, I will say in favor of Pope Francis unequivocally is the people most like-minded to him, he doesn't let them control him. He will sometimes mm. come down on them like the wrath of God too when they overreach. But he's also very forgiving of them. Lest we forget that Cardinal Togle two years ago was cast aside, but now is seen at all these papal events and is his ambassador to the U.S. for the Eucharistic Congress and looks like he's back in his favor. And he is considered, honestly, the most papabile of the of the that swath of cardinals, which is a little surprising. Yeah, <laughs> because those yeah. of us who pay attention to him find him to be incredibly cringe inducing, which may be his most endearing quality. <laughs> That's his endearing quality. eh? Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.